Welcome back sa Konting Kaalaman, Malaking Katulungan. So, the last topic was criminal harassment. And I believe I mentioned the punishment if you get convicted of that offense. Now, meron din pong factors na kinoconsider ang court when sentencing a person convicted of criminal harassment. Ano po ito? Under Section 264, Sub 1, sorry, Sub 4 of the Criminal Code of Canada, it says, where a person is convicted of an offense under this section, the court imposing the sentence on the person shall consider as an aggravating factor that at the time of the offense, at the time, at the, time the offense was committed, the person contravened the terms or conditions of an order made pursuant to section 161 or a recognizance entered into pursuant to section 810. 810.1 or 810.2 or the terms or conditions of any other order or recognizance made or entered into under the common law or a provision of this or any other act of parliament or of a province that is similar in effect on an order or recognizance referred to in paragraph A. So in other words, uh, consider po nila when, when, they are sent, when the judge sentences a person convicted of criminal harassment, di po ba? I said if the crown proceeds by indictment, the maximum is 10 years. So in order for them to, uh, for the judge to determine what the appropriate sentence is, they consider cer certain factors. And one of them, itong aggravating factor, ibig sabihin, mas pag kinonsider to, mas mataas yung uh, penalty ni impose na sa inyo. Uh, ito po yun if meron po kayong uh, violate the order ng court. Example, <clears throat> your unrecognizance, ibig sabihin on bail, right? For, um, for another, say, assault, domestic assault, for example, or, or simple assault. Let's say you assaulted, you allegedly assaulted someone, um, and then you were released on bail, right? One of the conditions of that release is that you are not to communicate directly or indirectly with A, example, the complainant. So that's your condition. That's a condition of your release. And then, I don't know, for some reason, you decided to stop the person. That's considered aggravating because, for example, um, you stop the person, you char get charged the man this time with criminal harassment, right? Um, then they find out, they may charge ka ng criminal harassment, and ongoing pa yung isang charge mo, which is assault, and you were released on recognizance where there is a condition for you to not communicate directly or indirectly, or so not directly or indirectly, but not to be within, let's say, within 100 meters of where this complainant lives, works, or happens to be. Isa, yan, yan yung mga conditions na pwedeng hingin sa, ng, ng Crown, sa so justice of the peace, and can be imposed on on an accused released on bail. So, yun po yung scenario. Ito po yung scenario na, na sinasabi dito. Now, you're already on release. There's already a court order for you to refrain from doing something, yet you did it again. And then, na-charge ka pa. Right? So, isa po yun sa mga uh, kinoconsider ng, ng, ng court na aggravating. Meaning, nakakadagdag nung i-impose na sentence sa inyo. Now, <clears throat> Uh, we have already discussed uttering threats before um, and natawa pa nga sila because na mentioned din yung uttering threats against your pets, right? Dogs, animals. Na uh, yun nga. Again, I guess it's in, it's not uh, a waste for me to reiterate that uttering threat is also one of the common um, mistakes that you know, minsan mistake lang nagiging charge kasi hindi natin alam na yung ginagawa po natin is is considered an offense, a criminal offense in Canada. Uh, yun nga. I guess, a recap lang, para lang, para lang matandaan po natin, since nandun tayo ngayon sa ang, ang topic natin ngayon is assault, mag-anak po itong mga topics natin, assault, uh, criminal harassment, <coughs> other threats. Ito yung mga parang gray areas sa mga Pilipino, at siguro din po sa ibang kultura, kung hindi nila, hindi sila sanay dito, right? Uh, ito yung gray area, so, important nating 
i-point out natin siguro pa ulit-ulit para matandaan din natin, right? So, yung utterly threats, uh, charge po yan, it's a criminal offense in Canada. Uh, if you threaten someone, you, you um, knowingly utter, conveys, or causes any person to receive a threat. To cause death or bodily harm to any person, to burn, destroy, or damage real or personal property, to kill, poison, or injure an animal or bird that is the property of any person. So, yun po yung uh, na, na discuss din natin a few episodes back. Um, it's considered uttering threats if you threaten to kill, poison, or injure an animal or even a bird. That is the property of any person. So, let's say, yung kaibigan ko si Lorna, may parot siya. Sinabi ko, na ko yung parot mo, sasakalin ko yan. That's threatening to injure an animal or a bird. That is considered utter threats under Section 264.1 sub 1 of the Criminal Code of Canada. So, pwede sa atin, hindi natin napapansin, di ba? Uh, nagalit ka, nasabi mo yon, hindi mo naman you don't mean it, but yung action mo, yung sinabi mo, na dinig ng iba, nagsumbong sa police, sinarjan ka, ang ending mo, may charge ka ng uttering threats, right? So, yun na. Importante yung intindihan natin yan. Ma 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 maalala po natin na we cannot do that in Canada. Now, um, isa rin po sa mga importante yung malaman ninyo. Now, I have been discussing or explaining um, what happens when you get arrested and then you go to bail court, right? And I think, um, we st I, I, if I'm not mistaken, we stop there. Now, um, I would like to go further. After you get released, what happens, right? Okay, so let's say you you were arrested for, since assault, let's say assault, you get arrested for assault. You were released on bail. On your own recognizance, meaning to say, you're just at, you were just you will just promise a certain amount of money to the court so that they will release you, and then they will set out certain conditions. And considering that it's an assault charge, one of the conditions would be to not communicate directly or indirectly with the complainant, not to be within say 100 meters of that person's residence, place of work, place of worship, or where he happens to be. Um, to not, for example, you used a cell phone, binato mo siya, right? So not, to not use any weapons, not possess any weapons, etc. So ito, nakal nakalabas ka na, right? You're out. Um, you have to remember, you have to consider, you have to um, make sure that all the conditions that the court imposed on you, um, you take it to heart. Kailangan, alam mo yung mga yan by heart, right? Kung kailangan itabi mo yung bill, paper mo, itabi mo. But why am I saying this? Because you have to follow each and every condition on that paper, on your release. Because what happens, okay? If you fit, like, let's say you have a curfew. Your curfew is, say, from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next day. Right, 6 a.m. in the morning. And then you failed to come in at 11, at 11, pumasok ka sa bahay mo, 11.02 p.m. Di ba parang two minutes lang naman? Di ba? Ano ba naman yun? But what if, what if there was a knock on the door at 11 by the police? Nagpunta yung police, wala ka doon. Say, may roommate ka, and they ask, where, where is so-and-so? Where is, you know, Miss Barrett? And then, sabihin, uh, oh, she's not here yet. Tingin ng police, it's 11.01. They can, they can charge you, right? For failing to comply with your recognizance. And ito, importanteng malaman ninyo, even, even granting na wala kang record, right? Let's say, your charge that resulted in you getting released on bail, meaning to say, ito yung charge mo, say, other threats, pinarelease ka on bail, right, on your own recognizance, and then um, may condition na nilagay sa'yo na violate mo. 
itong outer threats na to, wala kang record, right? And I will be discussing this some other time in at length. Pero yung set, pagdating sa, let's say, guilty plea, you, just, you, you want to plead guilty to it. Kung wala kang record, pwede, baka, I'm not saying that it's certain, but baka pwedeng bigyan ka ng sentence na absolute discharge or conditional discharge. Ito pong dalawang klaseng um, sentence na to, they are not criminal records. They're findings of guilt, pero you're not convicted. So, in effect, kahit nag-plead guilty ka, kapag ang sentence mo, absolute discharge or conditional discharge, hindi ka, wala kang record, right? But, because yung uttering threats mo, and then release ka on bail, and then you violated any term of that bail, even one, and you get charged with failing to comply with your recognizance, kalimutan mo na yung absolute discharge. Kasi malamang-lamang hindi ka na mabigyan nun. Dalawa na ngayon ang charge mo. Right? So take it seriously. Yung failing to comply, the court takes that seriously. The crowns, when I was a crown, I take that seriously. In fact, yan yung nagsasabi sa court na kung anong klaseng, kung anong klaseng akusado ka, uh, ito ba yung tao na susunod sa court? So, halimbawa, susunod na charge mo, wala kang, wala kang fail to comply, may other threats ka, sunod na charge mo theft. ano gagawin ng crown pag nasa bail court ka? Kung wala kang record, most likely, sasabihin ng crown niya, oh, he's releasable because when he was released on, on the first charge, he followed all the conditions. This is a totally different charge and has nothing to do with the first charge, right? So, most likely, you're gonna get released again on consent by the Crown. However, kung ang susunod na charge mo is failing to comply with your conditions in, of your bail, most likely, the Crown will say, wait a minute, you know, he was given a chance the first time he was arrested. He was given a chance, uh, he was released, and was given a chance to show us that he follows rules. But what did he do? He showed us he doesn't, right? So, syempre, most likely, the Crown will, con will not consent to your release, right? Lalaban kayo, and most likely, pakakawalan ka pa rin. But, you know, ito yung mga, ito yung mga bagay na mapapakita sa, ta sa court kung anong klaseng tao ka, right? So, I'm telling you, whenever you encounter such things, you get arrested and you get released on bail or even on a promise to appear or OIC undertaking and police on release and then there's conditions there because sometimes uh, pag minor yung, yung charges nyo and then you don't have a record, uh, pwede hindi na kayo dali ng police sa court, right? Uh, pwede yung police na mag-release mag sa, sa inyo at the station and then um, bibigyan na lang kayo na, okay, you come back on this certain day, um, and then when you come back on that certain day, um, you will report, etc. And on top of that, you are to follow these conditions. Susundin nyo yun. Because, again, seryoso to, hindi to biruan. Uh, because the moment you fail to follow any of those conditions, it could lead to another criminal charge. Okay? So, hopefully, you know, malinaw lahat yung sinabi ko. Now, um, ano ang, okay, under section, that's as under section 145 sub 1, yan yung failing to comply with your, with your conditions. Now, it's saying here that every person, that's 145 sub 1 of the Criminal Code of Canada, every person is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not more than two years or guilty of an offense, punishable and summary conviction. So again, the Crown can elect to proceed by indictment or by summary conviction. So alin tong mga guilty of this offense? Escaping from lawful custody. Or is before that expiration of a term of imprisonment to which they were sentenced at large in or out of Canada without lawful excuse. So ito po yung escape lawful custody. So, so uh, ito yung mga kumakawala, na nakakulong, tapos nakawala, ganyan. Uh, again, I, I don't think, well, I guess it's also important for you to understand what it is, that it is a crime to do that, or, or anywhere, kahit naman sa Pilipinas, right? Now, um, ngayon, minsan, uh, there's also a charge called failing to attend court. Halimbawa, 
you know, na nakasuhan nga kayo and you were um dun sa paper nyo uh, mag-umpisa tayo dun sa pinakamababa you were released by the police at the station normally what happens there is that they would give you a paper saying promise up here with OIC undertaking meaning officer in charge undertaking where you're saying to them you are promising to appear in court on this date lalagin lang din yung kailan kayo pupunta doon so you're you're promising to appear on that date and then attached to that is the OIC undertaking the officer in charge undertaking and then the they can put you know conditions there now the first part you promise to appear you better make good that promise because if you don't and you do not attend court then you can get charged with failing to attend court right it is a crime here na hindi kayo pumunta ang maten sa court niyo sa court date niyo importante po even granting that it's your first court date you have to be there if you well, for some reason if for some valid reason you cannot attend there are third certain things that you can do isa para at least alam niyo kasi baka matakot niyo ako eh paano kung may sakit ako understandable right so what do you do alam mo naman yung courthouse right kung saan ka pupunta may google diyan i-google niyo yung yung crown attorney's office right call them let them know give your name say okay i am maria elena rodriguez i was charged with assault uh, i have a court date tomorrow or even today, whenever, let them know. Mas maganda ahead of time, you let them know. Um, I was given a court date of, let's say, um, September 6. And uh, I cannot be there because uh, on that day, let's say tomorrow yun, right? Tomorrow, because I'm sick right now and I, I will not be able to attend court. So, at least meron notice sila. Ngayon, anong, anong nangyayari pag may notice sila? The moment they come to court, right? The crown now will have that note saying, "Oh, uh, Miss Miss Eleanor Rodriguez called the office yesterday, your your worship, and um, she indicated that she is not well and will not be able to attend court. So, um, I suggest you know we put it over to the next date with a bench warrant with discretion." Um, so, ano yung bench warrant with discretion? Ibig sabihin, meron ka ng bench warrant. Ang bench warrant is a warrant to arrest na in-issue ng justice of the peace. Right? Pero, with discretion, meaning to say, hindi natin ipapatupad itong warrant of arrest na to. Kasi alam natin na talaga hindi siya aatin. You know? Bakit nila ginagawa yun? Kasi sa susunod na occasion, at hindi ka na naman umaten, tapos wala, wala silang nadinig sa'yo, then, yung bench warrant na yun, with discretion, pwede na kayo maging full warrant of arrest mo. Bench warrant na, based on that, pwede ka nang hulihin ng police. Okay, so, na, reverse. Balik tayo, balik. Let's go back. So, so yun. So, kung may sakit kayo, there's whatever valid reason you have na hindi kayo makaka-attend. Uh, like I said, you gotta find a way. And one of those ways is to make sure, find a way to uh, communicate your absence to the court and one of those ways is either call the, crown, call the crown's office or duty council office actually na reverse ko usually ang dapat tawagin niyo talaga muna is the duty council office kasi this is really the service that they provide everyone um, they're there for the defense for for the accused um kay may lawyer kayo kay wala they will assist you so if you can find the phone number email address whatever just communicate with duty council and let them know I will not be there tomorrow and and I suggest sabihin nyo rin kung kailan kayo pwede dumating, right? So normally, ito rin, usually kapag uh, if you come, if you're asked to go to court on a Wednesday, yung susunod na balik nyo sa court every Wednesday na yan. Kasi sa court po, meron silang uh, certain days for certain charges. Uh, this is just, for example, Mondays, there for uh, domestic assaults. Tuesday for other charges, for Wednesday, ganon. So, uh, it's safe to say that if you were asked to attend court on, let's say, on Wednesday, when you call the court, when you when you call the council, or leave a message with them saying, please tell the court I will not be able to attend tomorrow, um, I can come back on, huwag niyo patagalin, right? Next Wednesday na agad if you can. 
So, kung Wednesday ka ngayon, dapat na-attend. Next Wednesday, just say, um, if you can come, I can come next Wednesday. I'm hoping I'll feel better by then. But, kung may sakit talaga kayo, umabot ang Wednesday, hindi pa rin, tawag lang it ulit kayo. Ang importante, they know where you are. They know that you are aware of your obligation to attend court. And that you are taking it seriously. You're not avoiding going to court. And I'm telling you, you cannot avoid it. If you are asked to go to court, you have to go to court. Okay? Otherwise, like I said, it will result in a charge called failing to attend court. Now, um, failure to comply with condition of undertaking or recognizance. Uh, well, this is the same thing. I've already explained it to you. So, yung mga failing to comply. Lahat po ng types of release ninyo. Na napag-usapan na natin before yung types of release from promise to appear, undertaking or recognizance. Uh, recognizance with a surety, etc., etc. Lahat po ito, you have to take them seriously. All the conditions imposed on you, you have to follow religiously because if not, it could result in another charge and that will be, that will not be good for you. Okay? Um, now, I guess that's it for, for failing to comply with conditions. Um, or oh, the other failing to comply, ito naman pong isang failing to comply with the condition, hindi naman po to bail. Uh, there's what you call failing to comply with your probation. Ito naman po yung, uh, if you already got convicted of a crime. Let's say you got convicted of um, theft, right? And then you were given probation, probationary period for a year. So after that year, or within that year, you're going to have to follow all the conditions of, of your release. Uh, not really sorry of the probation so normally um let, let me just talk about something that i really know uh young drugs for example you were convicted of uh, drug trafficking right one of the conditions of your release on I mean, the drug trafficking domestic assault na ulit, kasi ito yung mas importante like i said ito yung common ground ng mga Pilipino, right assault and domestic assault Let's say you got convicted of this crime and then you were uh, sentenced to, let's say, um, conditional discharge, which I, again, is not a criminal record, so wala kong criminal record, right? But then, there's probationary period attached to that conditional discharge. Let's say you were put on probation for one year. That one year, uh, meron conditions sa bibigay sa'yo. Pag assault, like I said, kung domestic, sasabihin, pwede sabihin na, you are not communicate directly or indirectly with the complainant, which is either your wife or your husband or your partner. Or you are not to attend within 100 meters of uh, the, her place of work, worship, residence. Let's say, vinalilate mo, tinawagan mo siya, or tinext mo ang yung complainant. That is already breaching your probation. So that results in a criminal charge under 733.1 sub 1 of the Criminal Code of Canada. So remember that. Meron ka nang, wala ka sanang, wala ka, wala ka sanang record. Wala ka sanang record. Pero because meron ka nang, ano, meron kang breach, magkaka-record ka na, right? So paalala lang, lalo na doon sa mga may conviction na, you're convicted, uh, not, not, sorry, it's not a conviction, it's a guilty, um, found finding of guilt. Kung if you're found guilty and then you were sentenced to conditional discharge and you were given conditions on your probation, seriously, po ninyo. Because you wouldn't want to have a record. Um, we'll discuss that next time, yung kung paano magkaka, yung record nyo eh magiging reason kung bakit kayo deport from Canada. Right, so we'll we'll discuss this next time because I believe that we've already reached, you know, one hour, naka isang hours baka lumampas pa nga. But anyway, so before I before I go, I just wanna quickly, again, say hello to my friends, my BFFs, Jackie Banasha, or as they say in Canada, Banasha, Michelle Diego or Michelle Diego, my ex sister in law. Thank you so much for helping me. Um, you know, with everything, with the moving and stuff. Also, my my good friend from Niagara Falls, Lourdes Tumulak, she's our pharmacist at Walmart there. 
Wilma Akilizan, also a good friend from church, from Mount Carmel Church. Of course, Father Michael from Mount Carmel Church and Father Gerard from St. Patrick Church, kung saan ako nagsiserve as a lector. And of course, my good friend from LA, Alvin Isidro, thank you so much for all the help, for the support, and for, you know, listening to me vent. And hello to Russell Torres. Uh, she's a designer. She's um, also from San Beda College in the Philippines, and she's now a designer. I'll see you soon, Russell. Uh, of course, my, my nephew, Lance De Luna, I'll see you soon. Oh, my favorite cousin, Bea Villaroman. I will see you soon again. I mean, yeah, I'll see you again. And Tita Malu Villaroman, Tito Glenn, and Ciso. And happy birthday to my former classmate, friend, si Marisa Salazar, doctor na siya ngayon. And I also want to say, you know, collectively hello to my friends from San Beda Law School, Batch 94. They will have their um, homecoming on November 9th at uh, Club Filipino, if I'm mis not mistaken. And I will be there to be with them because they are my batch, no matter what they say. Right? Batch meets sila. Uh, and of course, Jerry, John, and Jackie, I will see you. Uh, members of the award, uh, Awareness Against Racial Discrimination, Maria Fe Mativo, Edith, and the rest, um, Al, Marikit, hello, um, keep in touch, okay? And let me know what's happening. And of course, my former acting coach, Ed Australia, hello, uh, makikita tayo soon. And um, Tita Dexter Doria, I'll see you, okay? Mag magpapakita ka sa akin. And my cousin, Joanne Bondo, hello, I'll see you. <laughs> Dami ko makikita, masyado na excited eh. And of course, my Tita Beth Tobiera from LA and my Ninong, Florante Tobiera and my cousin Brian Tobiera and his wife Apple. So, medyo marami na po. Uh, next time na ulit yung mga nakalimutan ko. Uh, anyway, so, again, remember, uh, ignorance of law, the law excuses no one, no one from compliance therewith. Tandaan po ninyo yun. And uh, dito po tayo sa konting kaalaman, malaking katulungan. I do hope that you tune in again next week, uh, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Again, this is Attorney Maria Elena Rodriguez, uh, ang inyong lingkod, ang inyong kaibigan, your source of information, and legal counsel who's, um, who has the Filipino community's interest, best interest at heart. Again, dito po sa konting kaalaman, malaking katalungan.